Welcome to Adventures with Peps, and this week we are painting some Eldari with the release of the new miniatures. I had to start working out what I was going to paint, who I was going to paint, what craft world, so I decided to revisit uh, Samhain and do this red and white colour scheme. Now, as you can see, I've got a black primed model, and I'm going to just dry brush him with some grey paint to help pick out the highlights. Whilst I'm doing that, we'll talk a bit about Sam Hain. These guys were the original craft worlds, or one of the first craft worlds, to abandon the crone worlds just before the birth of Slanesh. These guys are pretty much oldest kind of versions of the Eldari race, I guess. They're more wild, they're more isolationists, they hang out with the Exodites a lot more, they um, enjoy riding jet bikes, so their army heavily relies on the jet bikes, they also have a lot of rangers in their force due to contact with the Exodites being uh, coordinated by the ranger forces of them. Uh, traditionally, this is the army that Games Workshop love to build, promote, paint. These guys are the Eldari version of the Ultramarines. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, that's just a fact. I have an interesting color scheme because it is bright red. There's black, there's white. It's a very striking uh, scheme as you will hopefully see. It's also annoying because of the white. I hate painting white. I just can't get a handle on it. Um, I think actually you're about to see me paint some white. Let's uh, just check in. Yep. So here, because I want a bright red and I want a bright white helmet, I'm trying to give it a heavy dry brush of some white just to help pick out the key areas. Uh, these guys, I really don't know about them. I It's fun painting red. It's not fun painting white, and I'm not a huge fan of jet bikes. Don't revoke my Eldar card. Um, the idea that they're a dying race, and that they obviously want to use fast, sleek vehicles to move around the battlefield makes sense, because you can escape. But in the recent years where where weapons like the scatter laser became very dominant on jet bikes. I'm from an era, second edition era, where you were only allowed one in three jet bikes to have a heavy weapon. It was a shuriken cannon. And the idea was these guys were probably meant to hold a flank and take the role of an ambush type unit. You pin a enemy in place, the jet bikes fly around knock some shots into the side, you then finish him off with an Aspect Warrior hit. Whereas, I think it was probably six, seven editions, the scatter laser became the thing and the jet bikes would sit back and you'd have tons of shots at 36 inches. I didn't like it, it really put me off them. Um, yeah, I couldn't get over it, it's a shame. But hopefully this new edition, I know it won't fix it, but might improve things for me. Right now you can see that I am going over the top with a nice another layer of white, trying to keep this helmet bright, clean. It's hard. Even when you see the finished model, you'll see that I still have grey streaks. I just was not able to get a clean enough, flat enough coat. What I probably should have done was lay down some brown and gone into cream then started working on the white instead as opposed to black, grey, white. But hey, learning arc, feel free to do that when you're painting your figures. And then now that's dry, we get onto the fun bit, cracking open some contrast paint and we start getting the red on. So I use flush tier of red reason I do this, it's a very dark blood colour red, I guess. 
what this allows is where it drops into the shadow, it gets really dark. And where I've got the white highlights, it starts building up the highlights that I want to work on. So yeah, I just load up the brush and I go to town. Absolutely, just slap it on. Let the contrast paint do its work. Let it go into the recesses. Don't play with it too much. And as you can see right there, nice big red blodge onto the white helmet that I just painted. Obviously I go back to fix it up, but this is another reason why I hate white. I spent way too much time on this model just painting white. I think you'll see me go back four, five, <laughs> maybe even six times trying to touch it up and it's still not great at the end. Um, so yeah, what does everyone think of the upcoming releases? Well, it went blurry here, we're going to cut all this. So. Sorry about that guys, Whoa, what, there. yep, there we go, it went a bit blurry there for a minute. So what does everyone think of the new Eldari range? Seems like we're getting a new avatar, getting a new Utark, we're getting some plastic rangers, we're getting some plastic rangers on jet bikes, which is an interesting combo. Um, I was very confused by the box set. I like what's in it, but why Sam Hain? I know they have links to rangers and jet bikes and that they are the poster boy of the old R race, but with a dominant Ranger box set. Why is it not Altioc? Altioc known for having all the rangers. Sorry, the camera keeps on focusing, so I had to move it. But yeah, the craft world that's known to have the most rangers. They didn't pick. And the only reason I can think is that this blue and yellow, which obviously is ultramarines. But I just, why, why not have the Ranger craft world as the craft world? Why do we always have to fall onto the same armies for these box sets? Oh, there's space marines in this box set. Okay, it's got to be ultramarines. Oh, it's chaos warriors in this box set. It's got to be black legion. I just would love for Games Workshop to now and again pick maybe not the poster boys or poster gals for the sets. Like if it's orcs, does it always have to be a goth tribe? Can't we have bad names in this box set? Couldn't this have been Altioch versus Word Bearers? Could it be Ulfway versus Red Courses? Could it have been Iaden versus, I don't know, Corn? I know in the past we have had some randoms, but it just feels like missed opportunity to try and convince new players who are picking up this set to paint something different. Sorry, that's my ramble over with. Let's get back. So I'm still painting red. And as you can see, it's took on a very nice shade already. I've completely splattered the helmet in red. Which, ugh, if I was to do an army of Samhain, which I don't think I'm going to after doing this. Right, and we are back. I've got white primer. I'm hoping the white primer will cover up all this red. That I just covered the helmet in. I think uh, before I cut out, I was about to say if I was to redo this army, or even do this army full stop, the heads would have to stay separate. I can't prime them black. You've got to prime them white if you want a smooth white coat. But yeah, this is not going to be the army. They were close. So now the choice is between Altioch and, uh, oh my god, the one beginning with L where they're bright orange. Uh, Lug Lugnanath. <laughs> Doubt that is how they're pronounced, but that's how we're going. Um, I'm very tempted by Altioch. Blue 
yellow is kind of the opposite of I Aiden, which is yellow and blue. So it'd look pretty cool on the table together, I think. Um, I feel the next video I'm going to produce is going to be that. I think we're going to play with the idea of Altioc. We'll do the Guardian up, nice bright yellow helmet, blue body. See how that looks for us. But as you can see, I'm now painting the gun. In the artwork that you see for these guys, they always have black shuriken guns. I'm not a fan. Um, painted one of these Guardians a while back in this scheme. And I did the black gun and it just, it doesn't look good. Made the model feel very dark, very moody. Yes, they are a moody space elf race, but it doesn't mean I want them to be moody. So for this one I'm trying out, um, I got like a snake bite leather contrast paint plus the Gulliman flesh tone contrast. So I'm going to try that out on the model, see how that looks. Hopefully it'll kind of give it a, a boniness. But yeah, I'm... It's not a scheme that I want. And as I was going through the lore for them and they're the cosmic serpents of Eldari myth and they have their wild rider families and hosts, they're just, they not interesting. They're aggressive, they're a little feral. They like getting into combat since the whole uh, Great Rift opened up. I think they've been fighting Corn quite a bit. Um, they've dealt with Lenari a little in the books written by Gav Forb, which I've read and reviewed. I'll drop some links below. But yeah, I'm just I'm not a huge fan. I, I thought I wanted to do the scheme because it's the scheme on the box. It's the scheme. In the codexes, normally it's everything you'd want. They're the poster child, they're young, they're reckless, they seem to have a lot of bodies. But yeah, they're just not the army for me. The idea of jet bikes zipping around on the table, that doesn't work. It just doesn't work. I think uh, I like to play the longer game. I want some elements that will jump in and kill everything. But I also want elements that will sit back and shoot. And I just feel like even with a Guardian squad, I have would have to have a Wave Serpent. I couldn't have blobs of Guardians or... I just feel like I'd want to have a purely elite, fast moving force. And that's not how I like to play. So right now I'm going through the paint collection. Uh, I think I grab some Mephiston Red there. And I'm going to do another dry brush. This model uses a lot of dry brushing. Once again, I'm like, why did I paint white? Why did I decide to go this white route? I'm trying to avoid going near it. But obviously, that's not going to work. Because it's white. It's going to find it, it's going to touch it, it's going to mess up again. As you can see, this Mephiston Red just dry brushed very quickly on. Looks wonderful in the helmet, um, but also it just looks right to me. It looks nice. I'm going to shut up for a bit because you're probably tired of listening to me talk. And we will catch up in a bit. Right, I'm back, and we are using some Bugman's Glow, and it looks like I'm digging through the back there a little bit more. Decided against Bugman Glow, and we went for good old Zandri Dust. This paint I love. It's good for highlighting, it's good for bases, it's good for bone, it's a good starting point for some flesh tones on your models. Here I'm just going to apply it to the shuriken gun and a little bit of cabling on its arm. Uh, 
and no surprise next up more white what is this this is third round of white going onto the helmet i'm pretty ashamed of myself i'm sorry i just can't do it i hate white i hate it Then with some cheap uh, dollar store grey paint, I'm just going to do the base. I'm not... In and up next is Snake Bite Leather Contrast Paint. This is new, bought it recently. It's actually the first model I'm using it on. So I'm going to be using it on the cabling and the gun uh, that has the base coat of Xandri Dust. Just load up the brush and start slapping it on. For me, this is actually a highlight of this model for me, seeing that this worked. And I think moving forwards, this is how I want to do my um, my Eldari Ranger cloaks, my Eldari Shuriken weapons, maybe. Though I think I would want to go lighter a heavy dry brush after doing this section and I also think this is how I'm going to do my Delac gangers with their brown trench coats. So now that I got this paint and I know what I'm going to do I'm pretty sure I'm going to move forward on that Necromunda game so expect a few videos about that one as well soon. Heading back to the base some more dollar store paint uh, Nothing too crazy here, I'm just going to use it to finish up the base. And now we're using some orc flesh. Uh, yeah, it's green. I've got some orcs that I want to get some paint on soon, so this made sense to buy some. I'm just going to use it on his eye lens. These Eldari Guardians have the world's smallest eye lenses, so to try and paint them is an absolute pain in the ass, especially when you only have a base coat brush in the arsenal. But yeah, there you go. Quick, simple, looks quite nice. If, as always with my painting projects, this is not going to win any awards, but it gives you an idea of how I get my effects quite quickly. And if you can work out your own schemes from it, all the better. So now contrast black Templar. Here I'm just going to use it on the Guardian's faceplate. I'm hoping this will help make the, the rest of the helmet, which is white, pop even more with the nice dark face paint. It's just not easy. I'm not a detail painter. I enjoy painting, I find it relaxing, I enjoy showing off how I do what I do, but yeah, picking out these little details and trying not to fill in his eye sockets and trying to find the triangle in his chin, it, uh, it's a bit too much for my technical levels. At this stage I'm probably closing in on how much time I want to spend on this model, so I grab even cheaper acrylic black paint and I just clean up the base room. I could have easily used some of my fancy Citadel paints but in my opinion they're too expensive just to use on the base like this. So go treat yourself to some cheap black paint. With the base complete and dry I grab the Zandri dust again, get the old ruined dry brush and start hitting up the gun again. This is just to lift it up a little because yeah it was looking a bit too dark. As you can see that just like really picks up all the details like the little bulbous parts, the harsh straight edges that are on it. Just lifts them up a little bit just to make them pop. Now I'm gonna be honest at this stage I'm looking at the model and I'm pretty happy. As I said, it's not an army that I would personally collect going forwards. But it looks great. 
I can see why people want to play this army. I see why people enjoy painting it. It is fun painting red. It's definitely easier than painting yellow. But I can definitely see that I would get bored. And I'd get bored quick. <laughs> Which isn't a good sign. I don't want to get bored with my new army. So I definitely need something that's going to interest me and keep me interested. I just don't think this is the scheme. And here it is, round four of the white primer. Once again, I'm going in on that helmet. I'm also going to pick up some gemstones. Uh, hmm. God, I hate white. Like, once again, I'm trying to clean up the faceplate. But every time I do this, I'm, I'm staring at the model. It's got like more and more brush strokes on it. The flatness is losing out. I'm having to build up layers on layers on layers. And it's almost like oh, I need to strip the model. <laughs> I was getting to that point with the white. I did contemplate chopping the head off, repainting a, a fresh head and going from there, but. This was a test screen to see if I liked it, and turns out I did not. So here we are, we're on the closing stages now. We're picking out some gemstones with Tesseract Blue. Is it Tesseract Blue? Something like that. I'll have the correct name in the comments. It's just a nice bright blue. I think it's too bright even for Altiox schemes. But yeah, pops quite nicely on that red and on the bone. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Then it's the classic time that everybody loves thrown on Agrax Earthshade to the base to help make it look like dirty concrete, sort of pristine grayness. And then I also put a bit on the model to help darken it down. But yeah, we pretty much have a finished models model now, guys. At this time, that I'm looking at it, and my red highlights aren't popping enough after that dry brush. So I go back and I grab the Mephisto red. And rather than dry brush it and mess up the red and the gun, this time I just tried to do some panel, picking out some panel highlights where I think the model just needs a bit more of a pop. Uh, if I was doing a full unit of Guardians, would I have done this stage? Probably not. As I'm only going to have a couple of these guys. I, I just thought I'd take the extra minute or two to do this. So as part of my craft world project, I'm going through and painting all the, uh, well, as many Eldari types that I can find. And the idea is that hopefully I'll get to at least 10. If not, I'll fill out the squad. But then the squad will become like a Lenari uh, guardian group that have just merged to form one unit from maybe broken up units. Very much a... I um, always forget what they're called in real life, but it's... Units that are no longer practical to be a unit, so they just get mashed together. And so far that unit, I've got at least five members. So we'll try out the Bill Tan, not Bill Tan, ugh, losing my mind. We probably will try Bill Tan at some point. But Altioch next, Lugnonoth. Uh, who else do I want to do? It's the green and purple craft world, though, El, El Caf. Uh, there's Miriam to do. Actually, there's quite a few craft worlds left to do. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, give me a like, give me a subscribe. 
And uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Cheers. <laughs>